Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to create availability group with automatic seeding in SQL Server 2016. We'll talk about uh, automatic seeding, what it is, and then we'll get into the prerequisites and pros and cons. So if you remember in our uh, availability group, any database that needs to be part of availability group, we used to take full backup and transactional log backup and then transfer that full backup and transactional log backup to our secondary servers and then initialize it. But with automatic seeding, you don't have to do that. Basically, that's what it means. With automatic seeding, you don't have to do that uh, full backup and uh, transactional log backup and restore it on secondary. However, it is still part of the prerequisite of availability group. Any database that is going to be part of availability group is still required in full recovery mode and it still should have one full backup and transactional log backup in place. These backups are not going to be used. I'm talking about the prerequisites right here. These backups are not going to be used in uh, automatic seeding. However, these are requirements of uh, adding any database in availability group. The other prerequisite is that the database data and log drive path should be same just as primary and on the secondary. That might be a little bit downside of it, but uh, we'll talk about it in cons. So let's talk about the pros first. Uh, number one, no restore required, no manual restore required on secondary for initialization AG database. Number two, one copy distribution instead of a copy per secondary. If you remember that any, uh, if we have multiple secondaries, we will take the uh, full backup and transactional log backup and transfer it to every secondary and initialize it. But what SQL Server uh, will take care of it for you that it'll use just one copy for all the secondary servers that you have added in that availability group. Uh, no manual transfer over the network. Again, this means that full backup will happen over the network by the SQL Server. We don't have to do anything, but it'll happen over the network. It is easy to turn on and off um, the automatic seeding and easy to monitor. Now let's talk about the cons. So um, this is not really optimal for larger databases. The reason is that uh, SQL Server still take full backup uh, or transactional log backup over the network. So if you have the larger database, it may take a long time uh, for auto seeding to be in place. And number two, uh, during the, that full backup, when it's happening, all the backups that's happening, the T-log backup on your primary server will not take place. Uh, if you have a big database, busy database, your uh, transactional log might fail in, in that case and your production database may be down. So it, it is not really optimal for larger database. Uh, for me, the same database uh, data and log file is also a little bit issue because um, um, some of the organization, we have secondary servers that don't follow the same uh, drive letters, uh, same drive path uh, for uh, SQL Server uh, database data file and log file. The demo is uh, pretty simple. Uh, setting up uh, automatic seeding uh, is really a couple steps away. So we'll get into the demo in a second. But uh, again, uh, when you choose your uh, database uh, or to create availability group with automatic seeding, you should consider the size of your database um, and uh, how busy your database is and also um, the geographical um, location of your secondary servers because if they are far then it's going to take a long time and again can create an issue for your t-log or uh, backup uh, over the network let's go ahead and get into the demo this is my servers right here this is going to be my primary server tbs prod um, and this is going to be um, my secondary server, TBS Charlotte Prod. So these are the couple steps right here. Let's go over it real quick that how we create um, availability group with seeding mode automatic. Um, there is no way that uh, right now, there's no way that you can uh, use graphic user interface and create uh, availability group with auto seed. You have to use T-SQL to create your availability group with AutoSeed. In my case right here, if you can see that um, create availability group AutoSeed, I'm going to change that. AutoSeed, I'm creating availability group. It will use 
uh, same endpoints right here. Uh, in my case, these are the endpoints. First, you will create the availability group on your primary with seeding mode automatic right here. If you notice, this will make it uh, the mode of our availability group when we create it uh, automatic. So once that's done, uh, all we need to do is go on our secondary replica and join that secondary replica with, with the um, availability group we just created. I'm just fixing it along the way. So in my case, I have, uh, you can just uh, maybe create the database. I'm, I'm going to use it just test. This is my database right here. I have taken the backup and transactional log backup, but uh, all you need to do is basically just have it ready for availability group. I'm gonna take one more time, full backup and transactional log backup. It's just a demo, so it's not a big database. It's a good candidate for auto seeding. Okay, our database is ready. Let's go ahead and run this on our primary server. This is our primary replica. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this command. It completed successfully. Let's go ahead and see that if availability group is created. Refresh this. As you can see that auto seed AG is created and it's primary at this moment. Let's take a look on the replica. As you can see, the replica, secondary replica, it hasn't joined this availability group, which will happen in the second step. So this is our availability database. So let's take this, this command, and run it on our secondary server. And we'll run this and command completed successfully. Let's go ahead and refresh replica. As you can see, that red arrow is gone. That means uh, the secondary has joined this replica. Keep in mind that I have not restored the databases at all. As you can see, the test is synchronized. It's a very small database. It didn't take uh, but maybe a few seconds. Let's go and take a look on secondary. There you go. This is our secondary replica and databases right here. And let's open this database up. I'll open this database on primary first. All right, let's take a look in the properties of our availability group. As you can see that uh, failover mode is automatic. That was part of our um, T-SQL that we ran. It says read intent. What I'm gonna do is say yes for read. Whenever this replica becomes secondary, I want the connection or any application to go ahead and read the data from the database. Click OK. Now refresh this. I'm going to check the database now if I can open it. As you can see that I can open the tables on this database. I don't have any table. It is just the demo. So basically that's that's it. Um, we can do a failover. Let's go ahead and do the failover. <clears throat> Keep in mind that uh, right now TBS prod is our primary and TBS Charlotte prod is our secondary. After we fail over, this should be uh, Charlotte prod should be the primary. Next, connect to your secondary replica. Next, and click finish. Uh, 
All right, everything is successful. Let's go and see in replica. As you can see, the TBS prod now is secondary and TBS Charlotte prod is now primary. Let's access our database. Refresh it. It's synchronized and I can open it. Let's take a look here. Refresh. And as you can see, it's synchronized and I, I can access it. So basically, this is it. This is how you create availability group with uh, auto seed mode on. I hope this helps.